Hello everyone, we are Team Bobo from Raffles Girls School, consisting of me, Emma, Lindsay, Chloe and Caitlin. For today's presentation, we'll be touching on seven main topics, namely the workflow and teamwork, the hardware process, the software development, the strategy and planning, how we overcame challenges, some innovations we made, and finally, our conclusion and takeaways from the competition. First, I'll be sharing about the workflow and teamwork in our group. So, for work delegation, Lindsay and I did hardware. It mostly consists of designing and building the robot. We also constructed the items needed for the competition, such as the walls of the evacuation zone or the speed bumps. Emma and Chloe were in charge of software, which is coding the robot. So, next I'll be sharing about the roles in our team. Emma is the team leader and takes care of admin methods. Lindsay and I are the secretaries. We frequently update our codes to get feedback and also update our timeline. Chloe is the progress checker. She reminds us of our agenda and keeps us on track. Next, I'll be sharing about the hardware and the design process for our robot. So this is the evolution of our robot design. Next, I'll be sharing about the sensors and motors that we used. We used two line checking color sensors. They are placed 1.5 cm apart. This allows the reflected light to land in the center of the green scratch, allowing the green scratch to be detected accurately. We also used one high technique color sensor. It acts as the fun color sensor to detect the color of objects in front of the robot for a relatively long distance in relation to a normal color sensor. It is used to sense objects and the walls in the evacuation zone. This allows the, the robot to identify and pick up objects easily and also gauge how close it is to a wall and when to make a turn. We also have one ultrasonic sensor attached to each side of the robot. It is used to sense tall objects and walls in the evacuation zone. Having one sensor on each side allows the robot to detect objects on both sides. Since the position of objects are randomized during the actual run, this allows our robot to be more adaptable to the requirements of the run. So now we're going over hardware optimization. Uh, so for our initial call, we devised a very simple design consisting of a white core powered by one medium motor. And the material of choice was cardboard as we wanted the core to be as lightweight as possible to prevent it from sagging under its own weight and the weight of objects. And how the claw works is once the robot senses an object in front of the front color sensor, the claw would then be lowered and the robot would drive forward until the claw hits a wall. And this would cause the object to enter the claw. And then the claw would be lifted, allowing the object to be stored until the claw was lowered again to deposit the object. So there were several issues with this design. Firstly, when the claw was lowered, it would block the front color sensor and prevent it from sensing balls in front of it. And this gave rise to more problems. For example, we were unable to find a way to estimate the ideal distance that the robot would have to travel in order to just hit a wall because we could not utilize the front color sensor and to determine the to determine when the robot was close to a wall. So obviously this had greatly impacted the robot's design, the robot's ability to pick up and deposit objects. And lastly, this car could not pick up the rescue kit due to the bottom of it being slightly raised. And for our new claw, it's just a conventional grab and lift claw. We use axles to build the claws to prevent it from laying down the front part of the robot. And this was a huge improvement from our previous design because unlike our previous claw, this one does not block the front color sensor. So the robot's movement is not affected. And with this design, the robot also does not need to travel long distances to touch walls in order to pick up objects. And this does save us very well run time. And this claw can also pick up the rescue kit due to its adaptable design and also allows the robot to better deposit balls than a level two evacuation point. The only drawback to this design was that it could pick up, it could only pick up and store a single object at a time, but we decided that this was a necessary compromise to achieve the simplicity and reliability of a grab and lift claw. Uh, lastly, to assess the stability of our robot, we placed the robot on a slope and gradually increased the angle of inclination until it toppled over 
And additionally, we also apply pressure to parts of the robot to see if they would flex. For example, in the picture on the right, the EV3 brain was easily dislodged when we pressed it, and then we knew that we had to do something about it. So this method of testing allowed us to easily assess the stability of the robot so that it could better tackle ramps and the map in general. And our initial designs for the base of the robot were not stable. So this method of testing allowed us to find an ideal position for the EV3 brain that would maximize stability. As for testing the claw, we tested it until we decided that it could pick up balls roughly 100% of the time. And if the claw did not seem to be very accurate or reliable, we would tweak its design slightly. So for example, after we realized that after we realized that the balls were occasionally falling out, we decided to add rubber stoppers to the claw to increase friction between the claw and objects. Next, I'll be touching on our software development and optimization. For calibration, we use scaled readings of RGB values to ensure that similar sensor readings are obtained for both sensors. We also calculated the error, which is the difference between the scaled RGB values and used the value for steering the robot when line tracking. The presence of green squares in the challenge also meant that we had to make adjustments to the conventional line track code. To optimize the accuracy of the robot, we coded it to sense for black for both color sensors before moving back to sense for green squares. We did this because it was easier to sense for black than for green due to its clear distinction with white. Initially, we only used the green channel for RGB values to sense for green squares. However, this made the sensing of green squares unreliable as the threshold overlapped with white at times. As such, we used all three channels and also calculated the dif difference between the sense value and the reference value to code which direction the robot should turn or whether it should just move straight according to the four possible scenarios. For example, if the robot detects green on the right, it will turn right until it lands back on black to continue line tracking. We used the front color sensor to detect the balls and the rescue kit using the RGB values. We coded the different scenarios using if-else statements. For example, if the RGB values are higher than a certain value, then we will know that the robot has sensed the silver ball and the robot will bring the claw down to pick up the ball. We detected the evacuation zone by sensing for the silver strip whose RGB values are higher than white, so as to transit into the evacuation zone code. To navigate the zone, we use the robot.distance function to determine the distance traveled by the robot and track the parameters of the wall to determine its location. Once the robot has completed a run, it will sense for the presence of a wall using the front color sensor. In the case that it does not detect the wall, we know that it is either near the evacuation point or the exit. And if it, if it is the former case, we will use the front color sensor to detect for the presence of black, indicating the black evacuation point. For the latter, we will code the robot to move forward to check for the presence of green, indicating the green exit strip. Now I'll be sharing more about the strategy and planning. A possible strategy we brainstormed to maximize the area covered by the robot in the evacuation zone and increase its chances of picking up a ball is a method we call spiraling in. The robot moves along the perimeter of the evacuation zone at a constant distance from the walls. This is achieved by utilizing the ultrasonic sensors on the sides of the robot. The robot will make a turn when the front color sensor senses a high R and G or B value, indicating that the robot is approaching a wall. After completing one round, the threshold for the distance of the robot from the walls is increased. The robot will travel along the perimeter of the evacuation zone once again, this time further from the walls. This process is repeated until the robot reaches the center of the evacuation zone and it has made a full spiral. So this increases the chances of the robot picking out a ball. During this starting process, the robot can determine the positions of the balls and pick them up and locate the deposit area. Moving on, we will be talking about the challenges we faced and how we overcame them. We faced a number of challenges along the way. One was crossing the speed bumps as the robot would get stuck and was unable to proceed with the line track. Secondly, the robot was also inconsistent and unable to maneuver around the obstacle successfully every time. The ultrasonic sensor also caused the code to lag, slowing down the process of the transmission of the sensor readings and thus decreasing the accuracy of the line track. We overcame the challenge of the robot not being able to move past the speed bumps by modifying the hardware such that none of the parts of the robot except its wheels would hit the speed bump and cause the robot to be stuck. So this resulted in the robot being able to cross the speed bump more smoothly and continue line tracking. 
to improve the consistency of the robot performance, we took a more methodical approach. We would find out the exact reason as to why the robot was not successfully completing a function before taking steps to solve the problem. For example, if the robot is unable to pass through the line gap accurately each time, we would know that it is an issue of calibra calibration and work on that. This enabled us to maximize the efficiency of our troubleshooting process. Lastly, we adapted to the problem of the ultrasonic sensor interfering with the line tracking fault by taking the risk to remove the ultrasonic sensor and instead use the robot distance, robot dot distance function to call the route that the robot will take in the evacuation zone based on the distance and has to travel. As a result, we did not have to compromise the accuracy of our line track for the sake of navigating the evacuation zone. Next, we will be sharing more about the innovative steps we took in this competition. As I had previously participated in this competition, I knew that time management and workflow is a crucial aspect of a successful challenge. As such, we reached out for assistance when we needed it and updated our timeline frequently and realistically to keep track of our progress. We also had a clear and purposeful delegation of roles to ensure that our strengths are leveraged upon while still supporting one another in our respective roles. For the robot design and strategy, we got down to business quickly and completed the basic design of the robot within two weeks to start work on programming. We also considered different scenarios and coded the cases separately, as well as used the printing function to debug errors in the code. Um, so now I will elaborate a bit on our overall approach to the problem. So for analyzing the task, before starting on building and coding, it is important to take into consideration the different requirements of the task in order to build a suitable and functioning robot. So for example, considering the design of the clone, we could not simply just create a generic call for picking up any object because the task required us to pick up and deposit spherical balls and cubicle rescue kits. Hence, we had to create a claw that was, that was optimized for picking up both objects, depositing them and holding them without letting them fall off. Also, we had to factor in the presence of green squares and line gaps when coding our line tracking. And for checking in on progress, we, in order to meet our weekly goals, it was important to take into account what had previously been completed and what had yet to be done in order to help us take actions accordingly. And to help us better manage our time, we created a timeline without trying to be too ambitious so that we could have realistic and achievable goals in mind. And we also updated our coach after each preparation session on our progress to get feedback and keep track of our work. Lastly, for, continu for continuous improvement and adaptation, even after a problem is solved, building and coding doesn't just end there. The optimization process is continuous and we had to constantly adapt our robot design and code to suit new problems. As previously mentioned, we had we had coded our robot to navigate the evacuation zone autonomously. However, our ultrasonic sensors caused our, our code to lag. So we adapted our robot by hard coding a root work to follow in the evacuation zone. Another example is our claw. So although our initial claw design worked somewhat reliably, we thought that we could do better. So we went back to the drawing board and came up with a more robust design that allowed us to pick up both balls and the rescue kit, as well as deposit them in a level two evacuation zone. Lastly, here are our conclusion and takeaways. So, firstly, although there are many problems with either the code or the robot, we persevered and overcame them the best we could. Secondly, we worked together to overcome the difficulties we faced. Thirdly, we collaborated and shared ideas and solutions with our peers. Furthermore, we worked smart, not hard, by improvising and being creative when things had not turned out the way we wanted. We also learned to be more methodical and reflective so as to make the right changes. Finally, for community sharing, well, we have our logbook that documents our engineering process for both hardware and software, as well as the code file we use for the challenge. We hope these resources will be useful in helping future teams better navigate the challenge and improve through modification. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed our presentation.